Greece is the foundation, is the birthplace of what we understand as philosophy, not just back then, but even up to today, all right? And, the, and the, I mean, if you're talking about philosophy, you have to talk about Socrates, you have to talk about Plato, you have to talk about Aristotle, okay? Socrates is like the father of philosophy, and a very interesting case, and I don't want to go down another rabbit hole, but I happen to believe that uh, he had an encounter with the living God, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Socrates' greatest student was Plato, mm -hmm. all right? Plato's greatest student, I hear the rolling thunder, Plato's greatest student was Aristotle, mm -hmm. okay? You have any clue who Aristotle's greatest student was? Alexander the Great. Wow. He was a tutor for Alexander the Great, wow. who conquered the world of his time. Right. So that's the philosophy, the concept. Why do you think Alexander's father, Philip, appointed a philosopher to train and teach him? Because philosophy is their, in a sense, it's their greatest god, all right? Philosophy, by the way, means a love of Sophia, wisdom, but it's a worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom. James talks about a wisdom that is earthly, natural, and demonic, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes from Socrates to Plato to Aristotle, and then to, to Alexander the Great, who conquered the world. Well, he didn't just conquer the world. You have to understand. I mean, it starts with him conquering the Persian Empire. So if you look at Daniel, the statue, you see the transition, you know, from, the, from that Persian Empire, right? Right. But it then goes down to the Greek Empire. Mm -hmm. And that Greek Empire conquered Israel. Uh -huh. Okay? Mm -hmm. Before the Romans were in Israel, the Greeks were in Israel. Right. Now, what, what Greek influence was called was Hellenistic. Hmm. Okay, the Hellenistic Jews? Hellenistic Jews were typically, it's not just a matter that they weren't from Israel originally, it's that they were under Greek influence. Okay. Okay. Because Alexander, his influence and the influence of that philosophy carried all through the lands that he had conquered. And remember, even in the time of Jesus, while Rome is in control, the Roman Empire, even in Rome, Greek is still the lingua franca, the, the common language. Okay. All of the New Testament is written in Greek. Right. Okay? Right. They had, but those philosophers had an incredible influence on the early church that lasts to this day. Now, you know, I did studies in, in the graduate studies in theology, which God protected me from. Yeah. But I saw how much influence, mm -hmm. particularly, you know, Plato and Aristotle had on the church that, that lasts and lingers to this day. Mm -hmm. I want you to listen to something. That, uh, there was a theologian. He's, he's gone now, right? His name was Ralph, William Ralph Inge. He was a Church of England priest, a professor of divinity at Cambridge College, and dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London in the early 1900s, right? Okay. Okay. He, he, he's no slouch in terms of yeah. theology, right? What he wrote was this. The Galilean gospel, as it proceeded from the lips of Jesus, was doubtless unaffected by Greek philosophy. Uh -huh. In other words, he's saying Jesus was not affected by Greek philosophy. Right, right. But then he goes on to say, but early Christianity from its very beginning was formed by a confluence of Jewish and Hellenistic religious ideas. Wow. He's saying right from the very beginning, these Hellenistic, these Greek ideas, the philosophy began to have an influence on the church. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if it didn't come from Jesus, and we just got through reading where it says that all knowledge and wisdom should come from him, mm -hmm. if it came from Greece, hey, you got a problem. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think it's still a problem in Greece, check them out today. All right. But now I'm going to ask you a question. And these are serious things, okay? What do you think was the single most powerful invention of Greek philosophy throughout all time? Most powerful invention? Yeah, because, yeah, well, it is. It's an invention. Okay. Ideas can be inventions. Oh, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer to that question is 
We're talking about Greek philosophy that has had an effect on the world to today. Mm -hmm. It's called democracy. Democracy mm -hmm. is a Greek philosophy. Okay? Wow. Well, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's democracy, and everybody understands, I mean, anybody with any knowledge understands that Greece is the birthplace of democracy. Okay? Well, but almost all Christians that I know in the Western world are certain that God created this form of power and rule called democracy. Mm -hmm. But it was actually an invention of one of the most pagan of empires here in Greece. It was one that would provoke Paul's spirit mm -hmm. years later with all its idolatry when he was in Athens. All right? In the year 507 BC, the Athenian leader Cleisthenes introduced a system of political reforms that he called democratia. Mm -hmm. That is the Greek term for rule by the people. From the bottom up. That's where we're going, from the bottom up. Okay, it's the rule of the people, all right? This worldly wisdom, that's what it is, that yes, Greek philosophy, yes, yes, has is. become for many, even in the church, the ideal system. Now you're going to know why I'm talking about Jeremiah, okay? okay. It's most, democracy is most strongly promoted in the world today by the United States of America, a nation that was born in rebellion to the British king, George III, right? The founding documents of the United States of America is the Constitution, right? Or the Declaration of Independence, and it says this, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Power comes from the bottom up, it says. Now, just as a clue, I'm going to give you a clue now. Recite as quick as you can in your head the, the, the prayer that we call the Our Father, that Jesus taught. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I hear the rolling thunder. Okay? All of the power, all authority, all of the glory belongs to the Lord. Amen. And Jesus, standing before Pontius Pilate, made it clear, all authority comes from the top down. I